Welcome to JWL Sports, where we review all the best sports clips from around the world. If this is your first time checking out a video, please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of, and I think we're well on our way to doing it. So without further ado, let's get to it. We're watching a clip of First Things First, talking about the NBA, talking about um, who's more likely to win a ring, LeBron or Curry. Now, I think... They're specifically doing this question, and I think Nick Wright pushed it because they had this hypothetical on the show first take with J.J. Redick. And J.J. Redick got in a fight with Shannon Sharp saying this is a ridiculous question because I don't think, you know, or they were saying, you know, also mainly, well, you know, who would win in a playoff matchup, the Lakers or the or the Warriors? And, and J.J. Redick pushed back and said this is, you know, essentially this is stupid. This is a hypothetical and yada, yada, and yada, yada, yada. And Shannon Sharp was like, well, that's what we do, man. Hypotheticals, that's sports talk shows, right? You do hypotheticals. Um, and Nick, and then Nick Wright actually made a whole video about it. And Nick Wright then came up and said, you know, why does someone like J.J. Redick? He didn't say J.J. Redick specifically, but it was, you know, we all know it was about J.J. And he said, I don't understand why someone essentially like J.J. goes on TV, just, you know, on sports, you know, shows and bashes sports shows. You know, it's just absurd. And they, it was this very fascinating thing, which again, I actually published a video that definitely check it out. Um, but I feel as though that's why this topic is specifically being highlighted because I, I, I do find it pretty interesting. Um, this question itself is is interesting because it's LeBron or Curry who is more likely to win a ring. I think that question is actually incredibly difficult to answer, mainly because I don't know if LeBron wants to stay in LA, I think unlikely. And if Curry's willing to leave Golden State, it's likely. Because Curry could easily join a team not unlike what Ray Allen did, right? I mean, like anyone can use Curry. And even when he's no longer who Steph Curry really is, he can still knock down some big shots like Ray Allen did. And so if Steph's willing to do that, it's fine. But I feel like Steph's legacy and all of that he wants to just probably play with Golden State forever. Even if Golden State ends up being terrible, it seems to me that he would probably be more willing to ride it out than like, you know, finish his, finish his career in like, you know, I don't know, naming random places. Philadelphia makes a play for him. The New York Knicks make a play for him. I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't see that. But I guess theoretically it's possible. And LeBron having his son wanting to play with his son is also a huge question mark to me. Um, so I'm really curious to see what these guys have to say with regards to this. Um, but those are my quick thoughts at the top. So let's get into it and we'll break it down from there. The, uh, just middle of the pack, yep. which is what they are. West standings, Lakers are ninth, Warriors are 10th. So who is more likely to win another championship, Steph or LeBron? This, this is what you want to talk about? I want to talk about how LeBron and Rui can defend the pick and roll? Okay, I mean, I this is what you want to do. I am. Uh, listen, smart money would be on neither. Right. But I think if you're saying one of them will, it is clearly LeBron. LeBron. Because he has the freedom of movement that Steph does not. That Steph is tied to the Warriors. Mm. Steph is, is 55 million next year, 60 million the year after, and I couldn't see, I guess things could change. I couldn't see Steph in two and a half years being like, you know what, I'm a free agent. I'm going to go somewhere else. I just think he has come yeah. too far with this one franchise. Yeah. And I do not think the Warriors are contenders right now. And I don't see a path to them becoming contenders over the next couple of years. Steph is still one of the absolute best players in the league. But after that, I'm not as high on Kaminga as I think a lot of people are. But even the people high on him think it's more projection. They, Wiggins and Clay are both basically a wall. They're just, you know, Steph Curry and then Draymond, what he brings mm -hmm. in density and defense. LeBron can choose his own destination next year. Yeah. And it's a vintage LeBron situation, Brew, where if this offseason LeBron signs a contract for the max, he will be criticized for it. And if LeBron this offseason signs a contract for the league minimum, he'll be criticized <laughs> for it. There, if he takes all the money, be like, That's oh, true. how important goes is winning? To win. And if he takes if he takes a veteran minimum to go somewhere, oh, basically cheating, guys, if we're being honest. Easy not allowed. Yeah. But I think there are four teams in the East 
that LeBron could sign with this offseason, that he fills a York, need, Philly, and would make them instant A list Cleveland. contenders in Philly, the Knicks, the Heat, and the Cavs. And so, and all of them make sense. Philly may be the least sense, but they also have the best player. It makes sense mm -hmm. basketball. Philly makes the most sense. I'm debating if I should share why I think that. Well, basketball-wise, yeah. a ton. And, so, and obviously, the Cavs and the Heat, there's some real emotion and history there. So neither with their current teams, but LeBron can leave his team, and Steph can't. So my answer is LeBron. I agree with what you said. Um, I'll give Steph a little more of a chance than you. I, I think oh, okay. LeBron has a better chance. But steps in two years, they could, if they play their cards right, they could have some money in free agency. And I think Steph, even though LeBron, both of them are still playing great, I feel like Steph is a little closer to his prime still than LeBron. Obviously, LeBron's putting up great numbers and playing well. But Steph, it I never was about that. defense. Yep. It never was about athleticism. He obviously still is one of the greatest shooters in the league. And, you know, he, he's playing just about as well as always. If the other guys were playing as well as they used mm -hmm. to be, they'd probably be contending. So I think in, in a couple of years they might be able to get somebody, you know, if they make some the right moves. I also think Steph could be an attraction to other players because he would seem to be easy to play with because yep. he's not ball dominant. He's a shooter, things like that. So I'll give him a little bit more of a chance than you. And, and I doubt, I'm like you, I doubt that he would say in a couple of years, you know what, I want to get a ring. No. Like what he would do is have to go to management and be like, look, you got, we're not winning anymore. You guys probably need to go in a different direction. Send me somewhere where I can compete for a championship. I don't see that happening, but that's what he have to do. The Lakers is the answer. This year, certainly. Like, this year, I mean, because LeBron has the second star already. And it's not just a star. It's a superstar in AD. I like the Spencer Dinwiddie move. Now, I'm not saying they're top contenders in the West, but I'm just saying I like that roster. You know, I liked it before they got Dinwiddie, but now you bring in him. He's a smart player. He's a tough player. He can shoot. We saw him get hot in the playoffs with Dallas. So I, I like that move. Um, I don't think they win it this year, but they certainly are closer mm, wow. to Golden State. And I don't necessarily think LeBron's leaving, but again, their talk, I, the talk is Trey Young or Kyrie. If they could somehow get one of those guys, especially Kyrie, then now you're talking they're injury prone to three of them, those three guys, but that's a nice big three. Do you so, okay, let's um, start to unpack this now. So, yeah, Nick pretty much just said what I said at the top, and I guess Brew kind of also echoed that too. So it seems like all you know, we all agree is that it's hard to imagine Steph leaving Golden State. His, his whole career is with obviously with Golden State, and it just doesn't seem like he's now going to just go to another team. It seems like the type of person Steph is, and also the brand that he has built, you know, the Bay Area. It just seems like even just for his career as a whole and his legacy, it's just very similar to that of Kobe where it's like, yeah, I'm finishing up in, in, in L.A., you know, just my whole career in L.A. Um, so I'm just not really seeing that happen. Um, and I think Steph and I think the, and the Golden State Warriors, since it is such an amazing, beautiful area, as well as now within the last – 10 15 years it is a an amazing dominant iconic organization right so you have people who do want to play in the barrier do want to play you know in golden state you know they no longer have the same urge and and want to play like in new york or even with los angeles lakers it's just it's just different you know once upon a time absolutely right now not necessarily so i think you have that going for you and i think it all depends on if golden state continues to be um, you know, one of the smartest, best run organizations like they have been in the past. Um, now to move on to LeBron, I guess I'm on the fence. I think LeBron knows that if he goes to another organization, especially if it's not Cleveland and if it's not Miami, it'll look bad for him. I think a lot of people would take issue with it because they would. They would just say that that's what he does. He's ring chasing. The moment he can't win, he has to just go to another team, and this, that, and the third. So I see that being an issue for LeBron's own legacy. Like It already is technically something that people call him out for, but to now add another team, 
it kind of can hurt you. Now, you obviously will win favors with that fan base, and which, as I said in a previous video, that if he goes to Philly and wins a championship with Philly, he will be worshipped, and they'll have a statue of him outside of the, the arena, you know, and they'll retire his number. Seriously, like, that's what Philly will do. They'll be so grateful. Um, and him playing with Embiid would just be box office, right? That would be so exciting. Um, so that's different. But like, uh, you know, again, like what other teams would he go to then? Now, if he goes to Cleveland or Miami, he can say, I want to finish my career in Cleveland. And a lot of people will say, okay, that makes sense, right? He'll be like, this is where I drafted. This is where I'm from. This is my city. It only feels right for me to retire in Cleveland. And people say, okay, fine, fine, fine. And he could even find his way back to Miami because he obviously famously went to Miami and he could say, I got unfinished business in Miami. I always said I wanted to win not one, not two, not three, you know, and we only won two. And I want to get another one for Miami. You know, again, he, he, you could sell it. And the fan base will also be like, all right, we love you. Come back. You know, it'll it'll just be different. But I'm not seeing him have that same type of leeway anywhere else. And again, you, I can name all these random franchises and it's just like, I just I just don't see it happening. Um. And then the other question is, is where does LeBron James want to be an old man? And I say that kind of loosely and, and kind of tongue in cheek, but it's true. Where does he want to feel his aches and pains? Where does he want to just like look out the window where he's contemplating his, you know, the end of his career? Does he want to do that in Cleveland? Does he want to do that in New York where it's like raining and dark and gloomy? Or does he want to do it in sunny, warm California where it rains like five times out of the whole year where he walks out of the street and it's just fortune and fame and celebrities and pop culture and you know all the luxuries that you have out in LA you know it's like where does he want to do that and so it just seems like if you're going to be aging and olding and and having the you know the league pass you by you probably rather do it wearing a Lakers jersey than anything else it's just di it's just different energy it's just going to be you know a little bit more uplifting rather than him doing it in like a, an Atlanta Hawks jersey it, that's, a, that's not his franchise and at this point LA is his squad it is it's his organization it's his franchise and so he knows it so when he's all old and you know just not that person it's still his locker room it's still his people it's still all of those things and even if he doesn't feel those anymore again he walks outside and it's his home you know he practically runs LA at this point he's definitely one of the biggest stars living out there so, which he wouldn't have. He would be a stranger in a strange land anywhere else, except for Cleveland and except for Miami. Though That's why those are the only options that I could really see him going. Now, his son is a big question mark because it's reported that he really wants to play with his son. But Rick Buecher has also reported that the Lakers are definitely going to get LeBron James or, you know, Bronny James whether they're going to draft him or just sign him as a, you know, undrafted player. And if that's the case, well, then he's obviously definitely, definitely going to play. But if Bronny gets, you know, drafted by Charlotte, is LeBron going to go down to Charlotte? I mean, I guess maybe, you know, if that's what, if he truly from the bottom of his heart wants so badly to play with his son, sure. But at the same time, I don't know if he wants to retire. Like if he goes to Charlotte, is it going to be a thing where he like just goes for one year just so he could play with his son to say that I play with my son, but then when it's time for him to like really hang up, hang up the jersey, will he just go to Cleveland and sign a one year contract and say, okay, I'm going to do my you know farewell tour with Cleveland, and that's what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to like you know have it all be about my son and all that you know because it's a weird it's a weird thing to do like a farewell tour while also playing with your son like it's just a lot going on you know it's just it's too many main characters in a movie too many villains in a movie where you just can't keep up. So LeBron definitely has some decisions, but as Nick pointed out, he has the freedom more so than like a staff to like make those decisions. So I'm really curious to see what it, you know, what it comes out to be, but it feels like staying in LA will be what he would do. Um, but his, like I said, his son is a major question mark and outside of his son, the only teams that I can see Cleveland and Miami. 
I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts on this one. If you think what I'm saying is the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard, please let me know in the comments below. If you think what I'm saying is the most amazing thing, then also please let me know. Either way, let's get into some discussions. Let's get into some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. As I said, we are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of, and I think we're well on our way to doing it. Thank you so much, and see you next time.